So let's get playful and start with an old-fashioned favorite, caramel apples. So let me start by lining my baking tray. And I have eight apples here that I've washed and dried. I've opted for red apples because they hold their red color when they're dipped in the hot caramel. So you can use a lollipop stick, a popsicle stick, even a grapevine skewer or a chopstick to secure your apple so that you can hold it when you eat it. The lollipop stick is nice, but you know what? Adding a straw just jazzes the whole thing up. And you do wanna make sure you get the stick in a good inch and a half, even two inches. That way you know it'll stay in place when you're dunking and eating your caramel apples. Now that I've got my apples ready, it's time to make the caramel. For the end step, I have my butter, vanilla, and salt. So first I'll get my ingredients in the pot, starting with a quarter cup of water. And I like to put that at the bottom of the pot because that starts the sugar melting right away before I even turn on the heat. Caramel is all about the sugar. Two cups worth. And to give caramel apples their beautiful shine and also their set, corn syrup. Half a cup of it. Now, the corn syrup in this recipe isn't just for the shine, it's also to keep the sugar liquefied as it's cooking. Sugar wants to go into its crystallized state and adding a bit of sugar in a liquid state like corn syrup or a little acidity helps keep it fluid as it's cooking. So now I'm ready to make the caramel. You want to cook your caramel in a heavy bottom pot, uncovered and always on high, high heat. Get that sugar melting, get it bubbling, get it caramelizing. What's also important to note, I have no spoon. You don't want to stir your sugar. The only tool you need when you're caramelizing sugar like this is a little dish with cool water and a pastry brush. And what I do with it as the sugar is boiling is brush right close to the edge where the sugar is boiling. This keeps the sides of the pot clean. And the reason you want to do this is to promote that liquid sugar. If a sugar droplet were to boil up and stick on the side of the pot, it could potentially crystallize. And just like frost growing across a pond of water, the sugar would crystallize along the surface of the pot. Simply brushing the sides of the pot eliminates that issue altogether. A tip I've picked up over many batches of caramel is that if you see a spot where the sugar's not boiling vigorously, just throw a few droplets of water down over that spot, that'll ensure it stays liquefied. The goal here is a light amber color. Once I take it off the heat, it'll also continue to cook a little further, but you don't need a candy thermometer. Your eyes are your guide. Give it a little swirl. There we go. Now I'll pull this off the heat and now it's time to add the butter. And now you can see why I use a deep pot because of the way it bubbles up. Oh, look at that luscious caramel. Mmm. You really want to make sure you're whisking in that butter even once it stops bubbling. That ensures it's worked in and that your caramel will stick onto your apples. Now that it's stopped bubbling, I can add my teaspoon of vanilla and a pinch of salt just to balance that sweetness. Now it's time to dip those apples. So I've got a great assortment here. Crushed pretzels, chopped up pistachios. I personally love granola with my caramel apples and even sprinkles. And then right from the pot, dunk in that apple, give it a good swirl around. I cover it about three quarters of the way. And as it comes in contact with the apple, it starts setting. And then it's on to, let's see. Well, I did say I like granola. And then you let this cool until it's set. And it only takes about five, 10 minutes for it to set up. I remember making these with my stepdaughter one time when she was little. And we used them as place card markers on a Thanksgiving dinner table. Whoa, I like the sprinkles. There we go. Oh, they look fantastic. And on top of that, you've learned how to make caramel. <laughs>